Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast. It's Mr. Ish. We're here at Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club, Kudea Clubhouse, season number seven. And this season is a doozy. I'm getting all the top guns. No one is saying no to me. I don't know why, but I'm going with the flow. Um, today we have another special guest. And this is this is a this is even more special, I think, than 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 our executive director. Because this guy is hard to catch. Um, please introduce yourself for our listeners. Hey, how are you doing out there, everybody? My name is Sinclair Hollingsworth. I am the director of operations at Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club. Mm, give you a little, give you a little applause. Yeah, There's you. people out there watching yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy to be here, man, to talk about all the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back. Um, we did, we did a podcast before. I ain't gonna put you on the spot, but it mm. was, the audio was a little off. Let's yeah. put it that way. Audio was off, and I don't want him to look bad because you know he's still signing my checks. So um, we'll start off there. Um, Mr. Sinclair, um, just tell the people a little bit of what you what your role is in the Kiss Bay Boys and Girls Club. <clears throat> well, I started with Kiss Bay uh, back in 2008. Um, I started off as a school-based site director in the South Bronx, PS140. Shout outs. Um, from PS140, I got promoted to uh, community center director of Throsnet Community Center in 2012. Um, from that point on, I kind of morphed into this supervisory leadership role. So I became an area director while I was still running the Throsnet Community Center. Um, from there, I became a deputy director of operations where... This our, resume is, this resume is long. <laughs> this is a three-pager. <laughs> where, <I was, laughs> where I was in charge of all of our uh, DYCD, uh, Division of Youth and Community Development contracts. Um, and then from there, I got promoted to director of operations in October 2019. Um, oh, right before the pandemic, right? Yeah, right before the pandemic, I got into this role. Um, it's been a role that I've always wanted, coveted, um, and, you know, kind of want to be able to one to, to affect change from a different level. Um, you know, where I sit now, I don't get to work with the kids as much directly, um, but indirectly, everything I do is for the youth. But now you get to work with staff really close because um, you're in all the buildings. Absolutely. You're in Absolutely. every building. That's why I said it's, it's so hard to get you because you don't have a secretary. I can't no. reach out to somebody. No. You understand? You may have two, three phones and, and stuff like that, but I, I can't reach out to the, another person to reach out to you to set something up in the background. It has to be direct. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's great because it's, it's good because I know that you, you, know, you pick up the phone and you reach, you reach out to me quickly. But um, uh, I, I felt some type of way yesterday. You were trying to duck me a little bit. <laughs> no, but, uh, absolutely, man. I, I, I try to I try to stay as accessible as possible. I mean, anybody that knows me or, or anybody that knows me in general, I answer my phone. You know, I, I'm not ducking anybody. So at the end of the day, I do have two phones to keep business <laughs> and, and personal separate. But at the end of the day, I'm always, you know, ready to answer my phone to support the, the staff. And to piggyback what you said, yeah, I, I get to work with the staff. I feel like, you know, sometimes I'm more of a social worker than anything else. But, you know, it's supporting, redirecting, helping them, you know, figure out some of the things they got to go through on a day-to-day basis. But that's also the, the, the growth because now we have, you know, 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds that you're molding their life and how to handle business, how to handle themselves how to, you know, respect the company, how to do all those things that, you know, we can't really focus on when, when they're only 13 and 14 years old because no. it's summer youth at that point. Yeah, now no. it's the real world. Now it's, you know, college. Hey, you should do this. You should get into these programs. You know, use what we have here to help you out. And, um, and a lot of people are taking advantage of that. So um, big up to you for that. I know you've been in, for the, you've been in the company more than 10 years, right? Yeah, 2008, 12, 13, 14 years. I grew up, years. you know, I grew up in Kids Bay, uh, a former Kids Bay kid, um, which is also part of my story that, you know, not gets lost. But at the end of the day, I've been through every aspect of a kid to a youth development professional to where I'm at right now. So, you know, it allows me to have, you know, uh, an insight on all aspects of what we do in, in this youth development space. I, I really think that's important because even when you drop in on some of our meetings, when we, you know, we start off either the summer or, or the school year, you drop off in our meetings. When you say something to us or you give us an example or you tell us a story, you're telling us a story from something that we have, that we're seeing now, but you already seen. And this is the way I will handle it. And this is the way, you know, uh, situations come up and how effectively to get out of these situations. So when we see it from a person that's been through it, it's, it's really different. Yeah, it's really no. different. So yourself, 
Um, Mr. Contreras, the same thing. Like, you've been in the system. You were a kid. You worked through the system. Uh, Miss Francesca, she worked through the system. So when you have people like that, you can really trust what they're saying because it is, they know what, they, what they've been through. They've had examples. They've made mistakes. They've learned from it. So it's very important you know, for us as employees to say, hey, nah, Mr. Sinclair said he, he wants it this way, and, and I think that's the way we're going to do it. Not that I really have a choice, but I mean that. <laughs> we all know, got choice. Yeah, that's true. You have a choice, <laughs> but there's going to be a repercussion too. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. one of those things that when we hear it from you, we be like, nah, nah, it, it's, it has to be that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and I think the, the reason that I am a successful leader is that aspect of it, is that I've done it. I'm not coming from a point of, you know, authority all the time. At the end of the day, it's about relationship and relationship building. If I build the staff up to do what they got to do, it makes my life easier. So I have Definitely. to I have to pour into them. I have to make sure that I'm available. I, I have to walk them through certain, you know, instances, accidents, incidents, um, staffing, you know, to make sure that they get it. So if they get that, now I can go on to do something else. What I also like is that, you know, you've moved up the ladder. So you also have the eye for that. So when you're looking at somebody, you're like, you know what, this, this person is a standout person. Let me put them in this situation. You know what, this person is doing a little, let me give them a little more responsibility. So these are little things that also, you know, as a staff member, you see that and you're like, wow, he, he trusts me with, with, with some things. Like, I don't have to call him back. Like, there's a lot of trust that you, that you build if, if you earn it, obviously. And, um, and it's really good to work for a company like that, that you don't really, ha- you know, your boss really trusts you. It, it matters a lot. Yeah, no, I'm I'm big on trying to build from within. Um, Who else to know what we do and how we do it than somebody that's been here? You know, sometimes going from the outside and getting people, they don't understand the culture. And then that time with them learning the culture creates, you know, issues, concerns while they're learning. Um, At the end of the day, and I tell the staff all the time, I'm always watching. I don't need to sit down, you know, sit at the table and watch you, but... My observations uh, are generally spot on, and, and I can able, you know, I'm able to tell who is somebody that's worth pouring into or taking the next step. And listen, all the time, some you might see something in somebody that they don't see in themselves. That's and very true. That's part of what I try, you know, what I try to do too is like, you know, you know, open your eyes. There's there's more opportunities. Keep doing what you're doing. People are noticing to kind of keep the staff encouraged. I mean, at the end of the day, I am a true testament of somebody that worked his way up to all the, the way top. Up. Um, it's funny, I, in, my, in my interview for Kips Bay in 2008, I sat down and had an interview with the then director of operations, Miss Yvonne Brown. And I remember telling her at that moment, I wanted her job. But I didn't want it given to me. I wanted, wanted to, to learn it. it and go through the process. And that very same day from the interview with Miss Brown, I went up and spoke to Dan uh, Quintero, who is our executive director, and told him the same thing. I want your job, but that's I don't tough. want to handle it to me. I want to go about it, getting it the right way. I mean, so. that's that's an approach that it's not for everybody. No, <laughs> that's, no, a, that's no. an approach that I would that I would tell people to do. <laughs> yo, you know, once in clear, I think I, I think I want your job. You know, yo, it stick to podcasting. <laughs> I don't know where you at yet, but um, uh, you know, that's a that's a that's impressive that you 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 had you know you had the the vision to to say, hey, this is what I'm looking for, and, and I don't want to place it in the platter. I, I no. want to actually go out there. And, and earned this. Oh, they made sure it wasn't oh, placed no, I, on the platter. Either, I'm so. sure. I'm sure. Miss, you know. Shout out to Miss Brown because I met Miss Brown later on. I think after she retired, but she's such a wonderful lady. Yeah. And I've seen her around because you know I've, I've been around uh, the, the camp and um, the, the clubhouses. Uh-huh. Um, but I never worked with her. But I met her and we had some good conversations. She was like, I heard a lot about you. So even with that, even not being directly you know part of of, of uh, her team when she was here. It was a it was a good look. She 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 knew who I was and all that, and that was kind of sweet. That was nice. No, absolutely. I learned a lot from her. There's one person that I can kind of pinpoint on, you know, who I learned the most from through observation or just watching or even just through conversation was Miss Brown. Um, and you know, at the time, and getting to where I'm at now, it, it, it wasn't easy. You know, I I, I got looked over for a, a bunch of positions, but. All I did was motivate me to go back to school. I went and got my master's um, to kind of eliminate the no. So that, yeah, was, yeah. that so was always my, my mind press. My, yeah. mind, my mind thought and my processes was, you're right, I didn't get this now because of X, Y, and Z, so I'm going to do this. I didn't get this now because of X, Y, and Z, I'm going to do that. So my goal was to eliminate the no, so you can't tell me no. You know what? Now that you say this story, I have a story too. I remember when, when we opened up Digital Arts, um, 
Contero, he he knew that I, this was my thing, mm -hmm. and you know, and I see new people coming in. I'm like, well, well, what's up with me? Like, you know, that's what I do. Like, we've been at events together. I do weddings. I do, it. and it was like, okay, so you know what? I did tell him the same thing you said. I said that's gonna be my job. Mm. That's gonna be my job. And yes, I waited in the background and I did all that stuff. And when it was time to come in, um, it, that's it. It wasn't. I I didn't request it. I just jumped right on in. I started doing the job, and that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations to you too. Oh, thank man. you. Uh, give myself some applause. I think. I like. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. Um, so it's one of those things. If you if you're motivated, it's very important. And in, in this particular job, you have to be motivated. Yeah. We we have we have different personalities. We have fresh new faces, new members walking in daily in here. Mm -hmm. So we can't be. We can't have negative feelings. We can't have a. a I don't want to do this type of attitude. Everything is, uh, I always say, is, is all hands on deck. You know, um, I started here at maintenance. And, oh, wow. and from maintenance, two weeks later, I became front desk. Once I became front desk, I was like, you're wasting my time. And they were like, why? I'm like, because I could do so much more. I stood there because that was what, that, what they needed at the point. But and then they moved me to other places, supervisor, key holder, you know, all those little things in a clubhouse, which you went through in, you know, bigger bigger situation but still i moved all the way up to the point that you know you let me tr you trust me with a building if you know our boss is not here you be like okay issues there we could handle this oh, we could absolutely. handle that so so that's very important for someone to realize these things you know that you can do and, and what you're capable of doing oh, absolutely. so i i love the company for that for that reason and uh the reason that we always are learning and we always are teaching Somebody, whether it's the youth, whether it's my kids, whether it's your kids, mm -hmm. or somebody else's kids, we're teaching somebody. Yeah, no, and and sure. that's, a, that's a flow that, that never stops. We never stop that. Um, so you, could you tell me a little bit about the differences in some of the clubhouses? I do have two questions that I'm going to ask from the staff, and that's the only, <laughs> that's the only thing I prepared. No problem. Um, I mean, you know, we're, we're in four standalone locations in the Bronx. Um, when I stay standalone, we own and operate two of them, which is we're at Kudir now, uh, Randall, our main clubhouse. So at Kudir, if you're not familiar, um, we have a recording studio here, a dance studio, a small gym, but it's serviceable. And then we just opened um, a state-of-the-art learning kitchen where our yeah, youth awesome. and teens will be able to learn how to cook from a certified chef. We just hired a culinary arts director that will be our liaison in the kitchen. Yeah, so that's, chef that's Evie, important. in case you don't know. Um, so for where I, from where I sit, it's all about exposures and opportunities. So I'm always looking to find things, not necessarily out of the box, but things that we see and we do and show these kids these are careers. Um, Definitely. You know, there's, there's careers in everything that you see. So now let's dive in deeper. Um, so to, to go back, we have Kudir. We have Randall, who, which is our flagship clubhouse, which it has is everything. sitting on five acres. <laughs> it has everything. You know, it has a pool. It has a... The a, only ice skating rink in the Bronx. The only ice skating rink in the Bronx. We have a 60-yard enclosed turf dome, um, a baseball field, um, basketball court. So, you know, that's, that's at Castle Hill. We have two... I mean, I'm sorry. That's at that's Randall, our Lucille Palmaro flagship clubhouse. Um, and then we're in two housing developments, uh, Castle Hill Houses and Throsneck Houses. You know, that gives us the opportunity to work in the actual development, you know, um, be a part of the, the, the Castle Hill and Throsneck communities. We are the fabric of those communities. We host events. Um, you know, we allow people to rent out spaces for baby showers, birthday parties. We do intergenerational uh, events at both locations. Dope. Um, and then we have uh, three or four school school based sites where obviously we're running programs that are funded through the Division of Youth and Community Development (DYCD), um, and we have two shelter sites where um, we have a multi purpose room and we work with 20 to 30 um, of the youngsters that are living in the shelter at the time. You know, those those members kind of turn over more or the, tra yeah, the transition because right. those are transition houses. But at the end of the day, we're there to support. You know, whoever comes in those doors. Um, and Kids Bay serves indirectly, directly about 10,000 kids a year. Wow, that's um, a lot. I, I know we throw that number a lot, but it's re I know for a fact that I've seen so many faces in the years I'm here. So, and, and when we do big events like, like the Day for Kids oh, yeah. and stuff like that, those play you and you see so you see the parents that were members and now they're parents yeah. and you're just like wow I, I remember when you were 14 yeah. I remember your first summer youth job yeah. what I, what I do like about about this company 
um, I'm I'm always very proud to to wear you know the, the our badge the hands. Um, but one of the reasons why I'm very proud is because we give back so much to the community. Oh, that's important. you know that's it's when when you see it in someone's face, you'd be like wow. And also when the kids come in here and, and they say. This is the first time I did this. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I ever did this. The first time I ever did clay. First time I ever did a podcast. First time I ever went to a golf course. Mm-hmm. First time I even sometimes went to the zoo. So some people live in the, in the neighborhood never had the opportunity. So even when they say this is the first time I went to a baseball game and they live, you know, two stops from Yankee Stadium, those are so important because those are the things that you remember in your life. That's no, a memory absolutely. that's never going to go away. Opportunity and exposure is what Kips Bay is about. That's awesome. Um, uh, all right. Let me, I think I go to my two questions before you. I know you're a busy man today. So I think let me make sure that. Let me see who sent it first. I think Jared, Jared sent me a good question. Um, he said, what's your, big, your biggest motivation for the clubhouse and the organization? <clears throat> hmm. um, I, think, I think, like I said earlier, you know, I, I grew up in Kids Bay um, as a kid and now as an adult. I think my biggest motivation now um, as a parent is also, you know, I sit as an executive of this organization and also a parent. So I look at our organization through two different lenses. What I put my kids through your program. That's true. I do that all the time. What what I put my kids in your program. So that's the lens that makes sure that I know that uh, program quality is uh, of standard. Um, And then at at the end of the day, what else can I expose these kids to is my motivation. Um, providing opportunities, exposure, you know, that's something that I keep saying, but I'm, I'm serious about it. You know, skiing, cooking, yeah. basketball, football, podcasting, beat making, you know, recording videos. I these, mean, are, these are jobs of the future, too. A lot of people say, hey, you know what, baseball players make, you know, $2.7 million. But you know what? There's a cameraman Absolutely. that films that person Absolutely. that lives really good. Absolutely. Li- living really good with a little 500, you know, Absolutely. 500,000 a year and filming and traveling and, and knowing famous people. So there's other jobs out there that, that you don't have to say, oh, I want to be an NBA star. No. There's someone that films the NBA star. Yep. There's someone that interviews them. Yep. There's someone that does lighting and all that stuff. So yep. uh, being exposed to, to different things like that is uh, very important. Yeah, and then my, my, my other goal is to expand. You know, at the end of the day, Kids Bay, we do have a footprint in the Bronx, but I think we can have a bigger footprint in the Bronx. So that's something as, you know, as opportunities and things arise, is something that I'm looking for You want me to go look for well. some sites? I mean, you I'll know, start looking for some sites. I mean, know, uh, I, need the, s- I need the overtime, so, you know, I'll yeah. start looking for some sites. L- looking for sites <laughs> is one thing. You know, at the end of the day, is the it's operating funded, budget. Yeah. You got to keep that money right. coming we'll, in. We'll, so we'll, we'll throw that back at Dan. Yeah. We'll throw that back at Dan. So it's always looking for opportunities to, to expand um, where I sit. And my motivation is to kind of bring Kids Bay to the next level. And, and before you leave, I know you got a couple of meetings you got to go to. This is a good question. Uh, I, I, I skimmed a couple other ones and threw that one out. Um, but this question, I don't know the person because I don't have the number locked, but uh, what advice do you give your, your younger self? Be patient. You know, I think we, we all as humans have a tendency of want things when, they, when you want them, but sometimes things come when you need them. Um, and True. that's one thing that Preach. I learned, you know, is being patient. I, I spoke earlier in this podcast that, you know, in 2008, I told Dan and then Ms. Mm-hmm. Brown what I wanted. It took me to 2019 to get mm-hmm. to get where I, I wanted. You know, I could have left and came back, but I stuck it out. I learned what I needed to learn, and now and I'm And from here. the people you wanted to learn from. Absolutely. When and you, things had to happen. Like, yeah. you know, we, we did have somebody come in and, and have the position that I have now, and at the end of the day, I think that person needed to come in, one, to show me some things, and then also show, show the organization what I'm capable of. What I, you know, who I am and what I'm capable of. So... I think everything happens for a reason. I think being patient is one thing that I would tell myself, which is hard. Yeah. I, I still, you know, I still it's want tough. it all. Yeah, it's tough. You, you, I still you want, want more. it all. You know. I'm being patient. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm being patient. <laughs> I've been here for 10 years, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm yeah. being a little patient. But, but. Um, so, you know, that's something that I would definitely, you know, tell myself is to stick it through and uh, just be patient. Uh, Mrs. Sinclair, I would like to thank you, sir. Uh, thank, thank you for you, your man. time. This I appreciate it. So you the see, first time. I, all right, because I maybe it's the lights. Maybe ah. maybe you like the lights, <laughs> or maybe maybe it's because I, I got to bring out more than two cameras. That's yeah, what I don't it is. know. The last time I felt like I was stuttering and yeah, well, you know, you were words. you were nervous. You were a little nervous. You, yeah. you were still young. Yeah, you were yeah, still yeah, young. Yeah, yeah. When was uh, that? Twenty what? Eighteen. 
<laughs> no, no. I ain't gonna lie to you. That was about last year. <laughs> you see how year. much we grow in a year? Yeah, come on. Man, that's all it's about. That, that was last year. Baby. But, um, congr- you know, thank you for everything. And, thank you. And, and, thank um, you. and thank what you do for us as a staff and, and for the community. And, uh, you know, keep up the good work because yeah. I'm watching you too. No, absolutely <laughs> One of these days I want to tap you on the shoulder and say, uh, Sinclair, I don't think I want that job, yeah. but, uh, but I want this other job. No, you know, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I want to give you your flowers because you, you have pushed and pushed for certain things and, you know, your vision might not have always been um, caught. You know, people not, might have <laughs> yeah, always it's, seen it's it. Hard. But, you know, now where we at and, and how everything is growing. Um, so kudos to you too, man. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. And keeping, and keeping what you wanted to do for these kids important. Because look, we got a brand new setup. Oh, we got a new setup. Kind of gadgets and Come on. And, you know. and, 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 and to give myself <laughs> another, I always say, we got 13,000 listeners out yeah. there. You know, that's not an easy process. No, and we got... Absolutely. We got a whole bunch of countries, like 98 different countries. We got almost every state. I got to go back to that, that Montana. I got to yeah. do something with Montana. Okay. But, it's, but it's nice because it gives the, the kids a chance to, to, to talk and talk about topics that they want. And now with the camera, they're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to see myself. Yeah. And other people get to see them. So that's, that's going to be kind of cool. Awesome. So um, awesome. these video podcasts are going to be awesome. Um, yeah. thank so you what, you throwing much. them up on YouTube or something? Yeah, yeah. I put them on, I put them on 12 different, different platforms. Nice. Um, nice. YouTube being one of them. Um, now Spotify has videos, so Spotify go gets that also. Okay. Apple has it. Um, Google Podcasts. Like if you know how to find a podcast, you can find us. Awesome. And you know what's cool? We're I think the the only we're not the only uh, boys and girls club, but whenever you bring boys and girls club, we're always the top one because mm. I think we have so many listeners yeah. and we have so many podcasts up, yeah. and we're so frequent. Like I I'm pretty frequent with at least six to eight podcasts a week that I put up now with video it is one video and maybe four podcasts but um since it's so frequent um it's always on the top awesome so awesome. you put Kips Bay or you put Boys and Girls Club it always comes up quickly awesome all right? keep doing what you're doing I'm trying I'm, Ish, and you keep watching it. me alright cause yeah, cause I'm watching you too <laughs> <laughs> see you guys check 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 one two one two check 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 check